Am I alive? I'm just so annoying. I can't even see myself in real time, can I? I think I'm live. If I'm live, please say something because I can't tell. Oh, okay, maybe I have a lag. This is so weird. I barely know how this thing works. I hope you can hear me. I don't know if you can. Um, if you can hear me, clap once. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to do that. Uh, well, I don't see anything in the live chat yet, so I'm just hoping that you can see me right now. It says I'm live. Oh, okay. Darian's here. Hello. Okay, so I think this is working. Um, and hello. I feel like I have not posted a YouTube video in a really long time. And going live should be easier because I can just, like, do stuff. And it's more of, like, the editing that just takes forever. But I am so sweaty just trying to figure out this whole thing. Like, my parents went out and they were like, we'll be back in time to, like, take care of some other things. And then uh, I was like, okay, cool, I'm going live at, like, 2 p.m., so are you going to be home in time? And they were like, we're going to be home, no problem, no problem, no problem. And then it was, like, 15 minutes before, and they were like, oh, uh, yeah, we're on our way home. <laughs> like, okay, so I just ran and, like, took care of everything. I'm so sweaty. I was not even wearing clothes. I was wearing pajamas, but I was not even wearing real clothes until probably about eight minutes ago, so, <sighs> okay, but thank you, hi, I have no idea how to, like, put comments on the screen, I don't know if any of that's possible, but I see all of you in the live chat, uh, and hello, it's been great, um, so, yeah, I thought it would be cool to do a little live stream video, because, A, I have not done a YouTube video in a long time, and I'm really sorry, because I filmed a whole bunch of stuff, I have all these vlogs, and I have a book haul, and I have all these other things, and I feel like just generally it's been like the editing time balanced with the like having to actually have a real job and like try to maintain and keep my job so they don't fire me kind of like time stretch. Um, but I thought it'd be cool to just do a live stream to talk about uh, the cool things that are coming up in general on my channel and also to do some book hauls because uh, a lot of you were very kind enough to send me some things for my birthday, which was yesterday, and I'm very grateful, and I would like to open them because I think some people have told me that they were not able to put a note or anything, so I'm actually not sure what stuff is from who, for sure. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to, like, do that. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to start because there were there's actually two things um, that are already open. So one of them... I know for a fact that this is from Manda because I opened it by accident because I thought it was something else, but I got Aquacorn Cove, which is so cute. It's this cute, like, graphic novel, and it's so adorable. And I had my eye on it for, like, a couple years, honestly. I'm just, like, so cheap, and I don't buy things until suddenly I joined the booktube, and I was like, oh, oh, I can spend my money on books. Oh, interesting, interesting take. And then I just bought a lot of stuff. So... Um, this is so cute. I actually am not really that sure what it's about, but I know it's like a girl in the sea, and I think there's like a magical little being that she meets, and it's, it just seems very wholesome and cute, and I've heard very good things about it, so I think it's adorable. It's, it's so great. And then also, uh, she got me Skyward, Brandon Sanderson. This is going to be my first Brandon Sanderson book. Actually, well, okay, I own Well of Ascension that I just bought, and I was planning to give it to my dad for, um, for Father's Day. But, uh, he had just started, I guess, I think this is the second book in this form. Well, of Ascension, I think is the second book in this form. So, he had Mistborn on his Kindle, and he started reading it, and then he came, I was like, oh, that's great. So I bought Well, of Ascension to give to him, and then later on he came to me and he's like, do you know how long Mistborn is? It's like a thousand pages. And I was like, uh-huh. And he was like, I'm not going to read that right now. And I was like, I'll just keep Well, of Ascension until you read it. So... Um, now it's just sitting on my shelf, but I don't want to read it out of order. I would like to read Miss Point, but I've heard, like, different people talk about different things. Um, I know that Angela from Literature Science Alliance has a video about what order to read the Cosmere in. And to be honest, I didn't even know what the Cosmere was. I thought it was, like, just totally... I, I honestly, I don't even know what it 
thought it was. I don't know. I just didn't know what anybody was talking about. But, um, I guess if anybody doesn't know, it's supposed to be, like, the whole universe that all of the Brandon Sanderson books take place in, and they're all, like, subtly connected. So, there are just so many books that I didn't even know where to start. And, um... I think she recommended Mistborn, which I'm looking into, but also Skyward seems so good, and I've seen a lot of my friends talk about this on their channels, so I thought it'd be really cool to, like, just check it out in the first place, and, um, like, to be honest, this is thick for me, like, I don't read books that are this thick unless they're through audio, but at the same time, it's just, like, I've heard really good things about it, and I'm excited about it, so, um, thank you so much, Amanda, I'm so excited about it, and, uh, she actually did leave a note, so that's how I knew this one was from her, and, um, Oh, so cute. I'm so happy. So thank you so much. I'm so, so happy. Um, and then also I have another book, but I don't know which from, because... So, I got these books, um, and, like, you know, they're addressed to my house. So my dad just opened it because he thought that it's for a different person, because... Okay, like, I'm sorry, and I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna level with you here. I put a fake last name on my Amazon wish list because I didn't know who might be like clicking on this thing and like I love you guys whoever's up here on this chat I'm assuming is somebody that I know but at the same time like you never know when there's gonna be like a random creep who is like I know your full name and now I know the city that you live in and now I'm gonna find you because I looked up my full name with my thing and I was like I am easily found on the internet that's not cool so I picked a fake last name and um my dad looked at it and was like maybe this is for somebody else so he opened it and then he told me about it and I was like no that's that's from a friend from booktube so no that's for me um so just so you know in case you're like why can't I find your picture online stop looking for me online I'm right here I'm on YouTube so anyway um so I got A Darker Shade of Magic which is so great because I've been hearing about this book for a very long time but actually the first time I heard about it was from my dad and uh we like go to the library all the time and pick out different books and it's you know, we just gush about all the different sci-fi and stuff that we like to read. I don't know, is this technically sci-fi or fantasy? I feel like it's closer to fantasy. Um, but the, the concept of it just seems so cool. And I've never read B.E. Schwab, period, um, like that. That old, like, book two Ultra Challenge thing is like, I would totally feel that thing. But this is the first book in a three-book series. Uh, and... It's supposed to be really good. I think there's, like, mixed opinions about it online, so I'm very curious to see what I think of it, but I think it's going to be really great. It's going to be really fun. Um, but I don't know who this is from. <laughs> so, if anybody wants to claim this uh, and receive my eternal thanks, please let me know in the live chat so that I can um, properly thank you. But, um, right now I'm just guessing. But also, it's very beautiful, I just want to say. Like, it's so pretty. And there's, like, a map. I think there's a map in the front. Is there another map? There's this. Let's see. Um, I can tell because you can kind of see, like, the shaded pages through the side. But, oh, and the text is so big. Oh, perfect. Ugh. I'm so bad at reading with my eyes. I feel like only recently have I discovered, through reading some of the series and portrait events books, that, which are, are, like, by the way, like, the pages are, like, three quarters of the size of, a, I guess, like, a decent regular paperback. And the text is pretty big, so I'm like, wow, I'm just, like, rolling through this thing. It's no problem. It's so easy. But now I'm like, you know, actually reading with my eyes is not that bad. And I've been an audiobook reader for so long, so it's nice to, like, do all this stuff. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm seeing what people are saying. Okay. Yep. All, all facts so far. No one's, um, no slander yet, so feel free. Slander me. It's fine. Um, yeah, but I'm gonna just, like, whoever this is, please come forward, clean your pies of my thanks, please. Um, and then in the meantime, I'm going to open up some more book mail. So, I have a few packages here. I think I got this yesterday, or, no, I think I got this a couple days ago. I've been, like, holding all this stuff to quarantine, um, so that way I could just touch everything, but just in case, you never know. Oh! Ooh, wait, I was just talking about this. It's Mistborn! Oh my god, that's awesome. Yeah, I was just saying that, um, with the Brandon Sanderson, like, whole Cosmere thing, that, like, Mistborn is a place to start, and, like, actually, while I was still at work in the office, I started talking with one of my coworkers about books and stuff like that. We were talking about, like, Red Rising and stuff, and he was like, oh, have you ever heard of this guy, Brandon Sanderson? And I was like, no. Um, and he was like, you should totally check out Mistborn. And, um, I had no idea what he was talking about. I thought he said Miss 
born. So I was like, is this about like babies that are born that are bad? Like, I don't know. Um, and then it's so funny because then I came to Booktube and everyone's like, Miss Born is a film, Miss Born, like, wow. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, okay, okay. So, yeah, but that's so exciting. Wow. Ten evil that has ruled for 1,000 years to be defeated. This is so great because I know Tammy has, like, feelings about the protagonist. I don't actually, I don't, is this a protagonist? There's somebody that Tammy does not like that I believe is from Miss Born. Um, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, that's exciting. Oh my god, that's so fun. Um, who is this from? Do I know who this is from? Also, I did ask, um, on my wish list to, like, please buy used copies and stuff if you can, if it's cheaper, because, like, honestly, I do not care if it's a brand new book or anything like that. As long as, like, I can read it physically, I'm happy. It does not need to be, like, pristine condition, as long as, like, the pages are all there. I'm very happy. So, this is exciting. Wow. And also, you know, it's got to reuse. It's very good. Um, so I think this is just a receipt. I'm not sure. Let me see. How do I know? Okay, this is from... I think this is just the seller. Oh, man. Oh, is this whole thing going to be a guessing game? I don't know who bought me anything. Wait, wait, wait. Tammy says, I am a hater. What can I send? Um, no, oh, no, it wasn't money. It was just, it was a receipt from the, like, seller location. So, may have some shelfware due to normal use. That's great. Good. I'm glad people are reading. Just, in general, people need to read more. You watch the news, they need to read more. Anyway, um, so, again, I'm not sure who sent me this. I, I don't think, but I guess that's the problem with, like, um, doing stuff that's, like, very anonymous, that it's hard to tell. Like, who sent what? Is it through Amazon? I don't know. I don't use Amazon that much. Um, I don't know. Bezos already owns my phone, probably, but, you know, just saying. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I just checked the packaging. I didn't see it, uh, in there, but... Okay, so you have two mystery books. These are the two mystery books. Um, please claim. Please. Uh, oh, man. Because I, I know that Sasha is not here. But um, Sasha from the Redhead Reader said, I sent you something, but I didn't put a note with it, so you'll have to guess, like, who it's from. And I feel like maybe one or two other people told me the same thing. Um, so, and, like, I know some of you are here in the chat because I see you, so if, if it's one of you, I'm watching you. Um, anyway, so let's move on. Okay, so here is, I think this one actually does have who it's from. Okay. Send a thank you. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh wait, oh, you think this one's from Sasha? Oh, yay! Oh my god! Okay, I'm so excited. I, like, you know how people are like, this is my crush, like a fictional crush on a character? I have crushes on books. Like, I, I'm so in love with this book. It's Close Encounters with Humankind. I'm in love with this book. It's so cool. Oh, I'm such a geek about it. I love it so much. So, basically, like, I haven't finished reading this book, which is why I requested it, but also I love it so much. So, this is about a paleoanthropologist who, at a certain period of time, I think he was just told, like, why don't you go work in California? And he was like, chill. So he went there, and he traveled across the way, and then he uh, talks about the different things that he taught in class, and generally, like, the things that we have misconceptions about in terms of humanity. And I think, like, sometimes that could be interesting just in general, but he takes it more in terms of, like, you know, it's paleoanthropology, so it's more of, like, the development of, like, from Neanderthal to where we are today and stuff. And also just, like, okay, well, let me stop being abstract. Let me just tell you something. So there's one chapter, chapter six of Scott Mill, and he talks about how, you know how, like, a lot of people today um, are generally not lactose intolerant, but some people are, like, a good number of people are? Actually, we all used to be lactose intolerant, and then in a certain period of time, people developed a gene that made them not lactose intolerant. They made them lactose tolerant, and then that passed from different areas of the world all across the place. But what's interesting is, I think it developed somewhere in Sweden, and I want to say, I feel like I'm totally going to get this wrong, but I was going to say Sudan, but there were two different areas. I know there's one in Europe and one in Africa. Um, I actually may have gotten both of those locations wrong, but I know it's in Europe and I know it's in Africa. And both those places 
had people which developed this lactose tolerant gene and then it just spread and then eventually it just turned into this whole thing where like now a whole bunch of people are lactose tolerant and that's so amazing and um it also does talk about like monkey balls like so i'm just saying it's an interesting book okay it's not a kink it's just oh, that's probably gonna be my stinger but it's <laughs> great um yeah so this is so exciting like, I think I just, um, jumped around in this book because each one is kind of like its own collective, um, standalone chapter that you could just read about and it's so interesting. But, uh, I haven't really read most of this and I'm so excited about it. This is so fantastic. So thank you so much, Sasha, if you're watching this after the stream has ended and, you know, you're off work and stuff. So, but just thank you so much. I'm so happy. I'm so excited. So, yay. All right. I'm going to open up another book. Another book. Oh, it's wrapped. Who splurged to wrap? Wow. Oh, but that's good because that means that there's definitely going to be like a card. No. It's from Darian. Oh my God, Darian, you splurged. Really? Oh, happy birthday, Rachel. I'm so happy I met you through YouTube. I really feel like we're close friends. Unless you don't feel the same, then it's chill. No, Darian. <laughs> I love you so much. I like we are. We are so chill. We are definitely best friends. We are the best. Oh. Uh, I love this book so much, as you know, so I hope you love it too. Oh my god. I think I know what it is. I think I know what it is. Wow. Okay, so let me, like, stop being coy and show you the packaging. Keep your gift a surprise. Oh. Unwrap your present before opening this envelope. What is it mean? Oh my god. It's Heartstopper! Yes. Oh, I have been so excited to read this for so long. Actually, like, I'm not gonna lie. I thought this was strange to dream of for a second, but then I was like, it's kind of thin. But it's, oh, I'm so happy! Yay! I know Darian loves this book. I think she talks about it on her channel in, like, two or three separate videos. And, um, you can always tell, like, when people talk about Heartstopper and they're just, like, gushing about it, and I know it's gonna be me. Oh, yay! Oh, I'm so excited. This is so good. I feel like I read, like, a couple books for Pride Month, but I haven't really read, like, that many queer books, and I'd like to, because, um, I'm queer. So, anyway, uh, this would be great, and also, um, if you're watching this and you're from high school, surprise! Because a lot of people from high school have been finding my channel recently, and I'm like, cool. Anyway, um, so, you're welcome, high school, and also, there's a little thing. Oh, is this like the return info if you wanted it to see things? Like, I don't know. I've never done Amazon gift thing before. So, I'm sure. Um, yeah. Oh, oh my god, there's like a little thing. Wait, what is this? It's empty. Wait, what is this? Is this the card? Like the thing? Oh, yeah, okay. Yay! Okay, yeah, it's it's like the message thing again. Oh, it's cute though. Like, all the packaging and stuff is so nice. I got extra little... Mm, love that. Okay. But, yeah. Thank you so much, Darren. I love you so much. I'm so excited. And also, like, I didn't realize for the longest time that Alice Oseman also wrote this, because all I knew was that she, uh... Does Alice Oseman use she, her pronouns? I don't know. But I think Alice Oseman, um, like, wrote Radio Silence and Loveless and stuff like that, but I didn't know that Alice Oseman also wrote Hard stuff for the longest time until finally I just kept hearing it over and over again. I was like, wait, what? Wait, what? But, um, yes, I'm so excited. Ah, oh, yeah, I'm so happy. I feel like, okay, like, I like doing this. This is fun. This is like a cute hangout thing. But I feel like this is so much better than, like, you know, if you ever had a birthday party in real life and everyone's like, open your presents. And you have to, like, open them and then everybody just watches you from, like, 360 degrees around you and they're just like, so, do you like it? Do you like it? And it's, it's just so much pressure, you know? But, like, this is so much easier. It's just, like, one line of, like, eyesight and it's great. And it's just, I'm just saying, like, this is a nice thing going on. I thought this was going to be really hard. And I was very sweaty coming into this stream. But I'm just saying, it's actually much more chill than I thought it was going to be. So thank God, because I am so easily stressed. Um, I know I seem so chill on the air, but I'm just saying. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so, okay, I got a couple more packages over here. Can I open? Oh, that one's like already half open. Alright, I'll open that one next. This one, it does have a little note. Okay. <gasps> Who did this? <laughs> I'm gonna cry. You know, like, I never cry over any books. I'm just gonna cry for receiving a book. Oh my god. Oh, from Eddie. Of all the books in your list, is the one I'm most excited to hear your thoughts on. Though she's sick, so take your time. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh my god. I'm so happy. It's the Hunchback of Notre Dame. I feel like I'm the only person I've seen on BookTube that is, like, crying over the Hunchback of Notre Dame as a book. But, like, I'm so happy. Okay, for anybody who doesn't know, Hunchback, like the, the Disney Hunchback movie, is my favorite movie of all time. It is so good. When I was a kid, I feel like it came out like right around when I was a child, like very, very young. And uh, I just was like, oh, this is a normal movie for kids. And I sang it all the time. I would swing around like on the banister singing out there. It was so good. And, um, fun fact, apparently, I was watching a censored version of the movie for 20 years of my life. Because, um, I think my dad bought, like, the VHS tape and then he, like, sliced it together into a different, um, like, video cassette tape or something. So he took out all the creepy, like, Frollo bits. So I didn't even know. And then I found out some things. And I was like, what? This is literally my favorite movie of my entire life, and I didn't even know that, like, half of it was missing. Because, like, you could tell, like, certain things were, like, not there. But at the same time, I just thought it was, like, oh, it's a violent scene, so you took it out. Because, like, you know, don't your parents censor the things that maybe nobody else did it? But um, I finally was like, you know what, let me, I'm an adult. I'm 20. I can go watch this now. Um, so I did, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, wait, what? Why? He's so creepy! Because everybody was like, Frollo's the worst villain, he's the worst, and I was like, I mean, he's pretty mean, but like, I don't know. I don't think he's really, like, more evil than anybody else. Um, I guess because I didn't have a concept of what was going on, I didn't realize how actually creepy he was at the time. So, um, I learned a lot. Uh, it's still my favorite movie. I just think it's so funny that, like, I basically didn't know about, like, there's a part where, like, Frollo smells Esmeralda's hair. And my dad, like, cut it out because he was, like, inappropriate. <laughs> I was like, I didn't even know this was in there. This is so funny. There's just so many little things. Because, like, I literally thought if he cut it out, it was violent. So he must have, like, put a knife up to her neck and was, like, get out of the cathedral. And that's not what happened, apparently. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. But it's still my favorite. I think it's, it's just, like, such a beautiful... I mean, okay, it's a terrifying, horrible story. But it's beautiful. You know, it's in its own way. Hunchback of Notre Dame is just, like, everything. It's just... Top tier everything is perfect for me. Um, and then also, I found out about, like, the real ending in the book, and it's so tragic, and I love it. Like, I mean, it's so sad, because Quasimodo is my baby, but at the same time, it's so fittingly tragic. And then I also found out that in the original book, um, Frollo actually is the, what do you call it, the head of the church, that guy, the, mm, the priest guy? I don't know. There's, I think there's another name for it, but, um, wow, I'm a big fan, but, like, I think he's, he's actually in that position, and, uh, then I saw there's the Hunchback musical, and it's so good, oh my god, if you can, like, watch it, I don't know, I'm, I'm sure there's, like, a way that you could watch it, if they're streaming them online or something like that, please go watch it, it is so worth your time, honestly, I feel like, like, the music is good, and normally, like, the music has to be so good for me to love a musical, but just, like, the story was so breathtakingly well done and like the main actor Michael Arden did such a good job and like I, I mean I just love it like the other thing is like they didn't need to have like really 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 elaborate sets or costumes but Michael Arden playing Quasimodo at the beginning he comes out just like standing tall and singing and then he like smears stuff on his face he puts like a hunch on his back and then just puts the cloak over and then he just like acts for the rest of the thing and that's all of the whole like the whole makeup and, like, costume stuff that he needed, because it was just so well done. Oh, my God. And, like, there's just so many little things that they kind of, like, took out of the Disney movie that I really appreciate as an adult reading and thinking that, like, it's so good. Um, wow. 
Oh, yes, um, Archbishop, that's, that's the word, yep, that's the one that I wanted. You know, I could, like, pay attention to the chat, that would be so good, because I am doing a live stream, oh my god. I'm so behind. Oh, wait, oh, 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 I'm seeing things that I want to read, with some ray. Um, that actually sounds super interesting. I don't know what sounds super interesting, because I'm so behind on the chat. Um, please let me know. Uh, hi, I need to go back to filming soon, but happy birthday, Rue! Oh my god. Um, but thank you for stopping by. Thank you. Uh, Heartstopper is amazing. It's so good. Um, Darian says, I don't know what that is. Oh, it's probably like the little, the thing. Yeah, okay. It was just, it was like the note thing. Um, oh, okay, Alice Ocean does use she, her pronouns. Okay. That's good to know. I just, I'm always afraid to, like, misgender people, and I feel like with certain authors, it's really easy to just, like, make a snap reaction unless it's, like, in the author bio of, like, what pronouns they use, so trying to be like better about researching that stuff ahead of time um yes Tammy if you want to I know you also have hunchback because I saw your classics video uh and yeah if you want to buddy read this okay actually you know what I don't think she's as thick as I thought she was but how okay mm, this is bible text this is very tiny so it'll probably still take me a time because uh Mick and Kristen will tell you that I am a goddamn snail right now on our Priory of the Orange Tree buddy read because they are like, wow, I love this person's like character development, and like, I'm on this page, and it's so good, and I'm like, chapter two, baby, chapter two. Um, I I feel like it's not really that I'm in like a reading slump or anything like that, but I just feel like I'm stressing myself out by reading so many books at the same time, and I'm just bad at like time management in general. So, like, I I refuse to quit any of my buddy reads because I think they're really fun, and I get a lot out of buddy reading, and I think it's so cool. But at the same time, I'm like. Maybe we should chill, and we shouldn't have made, like, a 30-plus book TBR, maybe? Hmm? Uh, maybe we should rethink this for August, maybe? So, um, whoops. But, yeah, I mean, bottom line is, yes, I am definitely down to buddy readers. I just don't know when. I feel like I always want to do everything right away, so I just tell everyone, like, next month, we're totally doing we're totally doing it, and then I'm like, what did I prompt? Wait, what? <laughs> so, um, this tentatively in the future. But yes, I'm very, very interested in buddy reading, for sure. And thank you so much, Eddie, for this again. I'm so, so happy. Like, seriously, I'm so happy. So, this is fantastic. It's such a good gift. Ah, uh, so happy. Um, no, excuse me. Creepy is a solo. Yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. No, I mean, he is creepy. He's a creepy man. We just didn't know as children. Ah, yeah. Um, okay. I will just refer to what Tammy said, because I don't know what I'm legally allowed to talk about on the internet, but, yup, I agree. Oh yeah, and Darian's brother was in it, I totally forgot about that. That is so cool, like, I, I always want to, like, get into musical theater and do stuff like that, and, like, do productions, but I feel like as a kid I was so shy, um, and I just didn't really, like, audition for stuff, even though I was like, I think I could sing, like, reasonably well to the same level as, like, another kid could, but I wasn't amazing, but actually, like, I don't know if it's just, like, nostalgia bias or something, but I definitely remember going to see those plays in the audience with my class, and the people that were actually on stage were really great singers. I feel like some of them were, like, better singers than actors, but some of them were, like, made for the stage, and actually, I know some of them have gone on to do, like, that, that's their career now, so, like, one of my friends in um, middle school actually does perform for a living with her family, uh, and they just like travel all around the world and they do like singing performances. And both of her parents were on Broadway as the Phantom and Christine, so that's actually pretty amazing. They get to like go and do those things. Um, and uh, my other friend went to theater school, and then she actually went to the same college that I did and studied English. So I think she's also like involved in the theater scene and stuff like that. Uh, so I mean, like th those are like very high bar things to like reach for and achieve. But I feel like it would just be fun to like just do. A musical thing, which, um, maybe you'll be seeing something like that relatively soon. We'll see. Um, just saying. We'll see. We'll see. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Oh my god, yeah. Hellfire is really good. Actually, there's a version, there's a version of Hellfire that's like, um, somebody sings it, and it's like a female version of Frollo, and it's not just like, I mean, you know how like, we sounded like kind of young sounding, so like if I sang, I'm not going to sound like this, like, I feel like I'm going to misestimate his age, but like 50-year-old man or something. So, like, 
so whoever sang it kind of sounded like much older, like they had that kind of like elderly-ish. 50 is not really like elderly, but you know what I mean, like it's an older sounding voice. So I feel like it just added so much depth to the performance of it. It's so good. I think like it's probably still on YouTube or like something like that. I saw it when I was on Tumblr many years ago, but I don't know where it is. But I, I think it's so good. Like, again, that was like a song that was censored for me when I was a kid, so I didn't actually know it, but I really, really love it now. I think it's so good. Um, yeah, um, how can you be behind on a buddy read? Uh, okay, yeah, no, that's so funny. No, 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 Priory, Priory, not Tea Dragon Society. <laughs> okay, if I was behind on a buddy read of Tea Dragon Society, like, there's literally no excuse. There's literally no excuse. Oh, hi, Sophia. Hi. We want more singing. Darian, you're you're involved in this thing, so so I'm just saying. We want more of your singing, too. We want more of everybody's singing. Um, so I've been talking a lot. Let me open up another book while we're here. So this is the one that's, like, kind of half open already. Oops. I think I know what this is. Okay, wait. I, I took, like, a glimpse of it, like, the cover, and, like, this much, and, like, that much. Can you tell what it is? Because, like, I, I'm pretty sure, I'm just going to guess, I think this is Howl's Moving Castle, and my guess is that it's from, uh, Eros. I'm pretty sure, but let's find out. Yup, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like, I studied the cover, I don't know. Howl's Moving Castle is like, definitely hands down my favorite Ghibli movie. Tammy, number seven, how dare you? Just, how dare you, how dare you? Um, yeah, oh my god. Sophia? Why would you even say that? Why would you even, you know what, no, I'm not going to stoop down to the level of debating a literal fact. No. Um, wow, this is so good. Oh my god. So, okay, so I've been told that Howl's Moving Castle, the book, is actually even better than the movie. And I love the movie so much, even though I know like the story kind of makes no sense. But I just, I love it so much, uh, and, okay, I'm just reading the chat now, and I'm like, he can sing, it's fine, <laughs> it's fine, okay, okay, yes, okay, I love the movie so much, like, I love Sophie so much, and, like, okay, I have never more empathized with, and yet been, like, just in awe of a character, like, I have with Sophie, because it's, like, if I was in her place, I guess there's, like, there's definitely a distinct cultural difference, because I think in Japan, you're not necessarily always, like, as outspoken about certain issues, depending on, like, your upbringing, and I feel like this was in also, like, a historical context, so it seemed like it was a very, like, super gendered society of, like, women kind of just have to, like, do whatever they're told, and she starts out, like, making hats and stuff, and then all of a sudden she just gets turned into an old lady, and I think there actually is a part of, like, the curse that makes it so she can't tell people that she was cursed and that she's not actually an old lady. But I feel like maybe I forgot that, because every time I watch the movie, I'm like, just tell him, just tell him you're not even old. He's so mean. He's so mean. Oh, my God, what a dick. Ah. So the whole time, he's just like, wow, you're so old. You're so old. Why did you mix up my shampoo? And he's like, she's not even old. Okay, anyway. Um, but I've heard this is really good, because, like, you actually get to see inside of Sophie's head. I mean, this would be so cool because I, I love her so much. Like, I think she's such a, like, great protagonist. And I, I, I don't know, it's like an inexplicable love for the whole story that's there, even though I know it doesn't make sense. And normally I'm so logical that in my books, if it doesn't make sense, I'm like, can't rate this higher than the three. Like, I just can't. But at the same time, like, there's something about it that, like, makes just enough sense and it's just so visually stunning that I will easily excuse the story not really working with the whole, like, there's randomly a war, and also Howl is a bird. So, it's, it's bizarre. And if somebody actually, like, knows what the whole deal with that is and can make it make sense, I feel like it's probably the source author. So, I guess we'll see how I feel about it once I actually read it. But I think, um, I, I think this is a series, maybe. I'm not sure, but I know that, like, okay, I'm pretty sure Diana Wynne-Jones actually wrote a whole bunch of books about, like, a magical school and a kid that goes to the magical school and um somebody was like interesting idea i'm gonna steal that 
and then make a multi-million dollar franchise. So that's what I've heard. And Diana Wynne Jones is aware of that and was like, I guess it's fine. So that's the tea. Can we read more chat? Um, how is this good than the game scene to read this stuff? Whose live is this? Tammy? What? <clears throat> Jesus. Oh my god. Um, Ruth said, I like them both equally, to be honest. Oh, oh, the book and the, um, the movie. Oh, that's interesting. It's very different, but it's still the same, and at least equality. Oh, equally as amazing, sorry. Equally as amazing. It's true. Probably. I'm sure it's true. He can sing! He can sing! Ah, oh my god. He's very good at writing music. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> He's talented, just not now. Oh, Sasha's here. Hi, Sasha. Oh, thank you so much for the book. Just one second. Okay. Thank you so much for the book. Such a good book. I was just gushing about this earlier in the live stream, but I see that you're here, so I just want to pull it up and be like, thank you so much. Because, um, I'm so excited about this book. This is like one of my book crushes, so I'm so, so, so happy with it. I get to have it now. So happy. Um, let me see. Oh, there's another people. Okay. I'm waiting for Rachel to watch the video. Wait, what? Hmm. I don't know what video we're talking about. He can sing. If you've been able to stand with an earplug. Jesus, Rue. Oh my god. Jeez. Wow. Savaging. Uh, thank you, Sophia. Thank you so much. Uh, I did, I feel like the thing is, like, I normally don't talk about numbers or anything like that, uh, but I just kind of felt like, I'm like this close to 200, and I feel like if I just talk about it a little bit on Twitter, maybe, maybe, maybe I can hit 200 for my birthday, so, uh, I did, and I'm so happy, and, you know, so many of you, uh, retweeted it and it got people interested in checking out my channel, so I do want to thank all of you for number one, for subscribing, and number two, for continuously supporting me, because I honestly started booktube, like, I'm pretty sure I, I uploaded my first video on May 1st, and ever since then, I feel like, I mean, like, you know, the numbers growing is cool, it's a cool thing, but generally, I feel like it's just interacting with all of you, and seeing the very cool, like, content that you put out, and... I, I just feel like I've met a lot of people that generally, if I had not been on BookTube or anything like that, I would watch with, like, awe and be like, oh my god, you're so cool, you're so cool. I would never, like, be cool enough to talk to you and be your friend or anything like that. But just, like, so many of you have been really welcoming and so friendly, and it's just amazing to become friends with people that, I don't know, like, we share so many of the same interests, and yet also, like, certain um, things, such as what's happening in the chat about somebody's wonderful singing. So I'm just saying... We have our differences, but at the same time, I'm just, it's so cool to make new friends, and I think, like, within quarantine, it's especially very, um, I don't know, I mean, I feel like it's important for me, because I do have, like, this extra way to, like, communicate with people, and to just kind of, like, cultivate a little space that has, I guess, in a way, it's kept me sane during quarantine, it's given me, like, a really cool project to continuously work on. And it also gives me an opportunity to actually upload things that I normally would have just kept to myself because maybe they're not good enough or maybe nobody will watch it. But when you make those friends through this community, it feels like you always have at least somebody who's going to interact with your video and make you feel like it's worth it and encourage you to just keep going and going and going. And so many of you have done that and it's so cool. And I'm just, I'm just so grateful that all of you... Am I still alive? Hmm... This isn't working. Hmm. Okay. Um. I don't know what's happening because it says I still have some people that are viewing this right now, and I can see myself, but I see the chat says that I'm not able to connect. Can you please try again later? 
So, I don't know. I have my phone. Maybe anybody, um, am I still alive? I don't know what to do. Can anybody, like, tell me if I'm still alive or something? I see myself on the thing. Oh, oh my god. Oh, I don't have my Wi-Fi on. Okay. Um, if you can see me, can you, like, just message me or something so that I know I'm actually still here? Oh my god. This would happen. I tried to go live. I thought I was going to be chill. Now. Now it's acting up. Now it's acting weird. Don't like that. Don't like that. Hmm. Oh, okay. I'm getting notifications from the channel. Okay. I am live. Is that... Wait. Am I still live right now? I guess this is like the, um, the risk you have to take when you do live channels that you just don't know if it's still going to work. I don't know why the chat stopped working though. Because um, it says just like try again later, but what am I supposed to try? Can I like turn it off and turn it back on? Maybe I can change my stream. Nope, can't change your stream latency. Just kidding. Uh, mad weird. Okay. Well, I don't like that, but. If I refresh, will it the stream end? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe can I just copy this into another window and see if it works? Technical difficulties, technical difficulties. Mm-hmm. Okay. Alright, she's in. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm back, I'm back. Alright. Oh, everybody was so nice. They were like, yep, you're here. Yep. Okay. Alright, let me, let me scroll back up. I can see everybody again. Fantastic. <laughs> God. Um, yes, okay. I definitely feel like we all pulled each other through quarantine to, like, at least to a certain degree, like, whether people, um, are, like, really actively talking to me or, like, any of our, like, group of friends or anything like that, like, every day or just every once in a while. It's just nice to, like, have something to come back to. So... I don't know, like, I just, I think that's so great, like, there's just always, like, some consistency that even without, like, the general structure that you have outside of quarantine, there's something, so I think that's so great, and obviously, like, I think it's really cool to also be friends with a lot of other creators, because you get to see new stuff from them all the time, and, you know, and you also get to see a familiar face, so I think that's really cool. Um, oh my god, yeah, oh, I forgot, Daria and I started, like, almost on the same day, like, a couple days apart. So, yeah, that's so cool. Oh, I love you too, Tammy. Don't cry, Jenny. <laughs> oh, no. Um, okay, I am back, I am back. You are back now. You paused for a bit. You're back on now. You're back. Okay, nice. YouTube was like, this emotion is a little too much for me, the FBI man. So, um, hmm. Oh, Eddie, hi. Okay, I did get your book, and I'm so happy, and thank you so much. I just gushed about this for, like, probably 20 minutes, um, a while ago, so, um, it will be available in the replay or whatever like that. I, I don't really know how, like, the stuff gets posted and stuff, but, yes, thank you so much. This is, like, I almost cried. I really almost cried, and we know, like, I never cry over books, but, like, I'm so happy to just have this book. It's so great. Uh, yes, okay. I'm good. I'm still alive. You're still here. She can't see the chat. Hi. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're all good. We're good. Um. Hi. Oh, hi. I am so behind on our buddy read. Just so you know. <laughs> I feel like that could be applied to like anybody who comes into this chat, and I'd be like, I'm behind on our buddy read. Mm. Um. Anyway, yes. Yeah, so this is the last book that I just unboxed. I guess you could say. So very exciting. And I'm gonna assume that this is from um ears because I don't I don't see a note with it unless um I miss a note. No, I, I don't see a note. So I, I mean I'm pretty sure this is from ears. So um thanks so much. Thank you. 
Also, I am still... Okay, wait. A couple of you jumped back into the chat, so... I am still waiting for somebody to claim these two books, because I don't know who they're from, and I... I, I know I got this one, like, a little while ago, like, at least a week ago, and this one maybe within the last week, so please claim if this is you, uh, and I will properly thank you, please, so, okay. Alright, and I have three more to unbox for now. I think some people said that they had more that's coming that, um, is not here yet. I think maybe one is coming today. And one's coming Wednesday. And I also, um, I, w I was very lucky to actually win. Uh, I, oh, oh, Rue said I sent you Mistborn. Okay, that makes sense. All right, Rue was like, this is a book that, like, I talk about on my channel all the time. And I was like, ooh, is it this? Is it this? Is it this? And Rue was like, why don't you actually watch my videos? <laughs> I was like, I do. You talk about a lot of books, but you mostly just talk about House of the Cerulean Sea and Fruits Basket. And I'm pretty sure I didn't have either of those on my wish list. So I was like, am I a bad friend, or am I just stupid, because I have, like, very quickly expiring brain cells, I don't know. Um, yes, okay, I feel like I was in the middle of saying something and I forgot what it was, but, anyway, thank you, Rue, thank you very much, um, after I lightly bully you on my live stream, thank you so much, <laughs> very appreciative, and, uh, I'm excited, I, now, now I don't know, should I start with Skyward or with Mistborn? Because I do have Well of Ascension, so I could just go from one into the other, and... Okay, this is like Bible text, though. Okay, it's, it's actually not Bible text, but it's like pretty close. It's like... Mm. Okay. You didn't have Stormlight on there. You didn't have them. Yeah, I didn't! Um, I, I normally wouldn't put a book on my wish list unless it's something that I couldn't get anywhere else. So like, recently my library reopened, so I'm actually able to get access to more physical books which is nice, but also I don't read with my eyes often and as quickly, so I usually just look for whatever I can find as an audiobook through all of my library apps and stuff like that. So I found House in the Cerulean Sea. Um, if you think it's better read as like a physical book, I will try to get my hands on a physical book at some point. Um, so, yeah, but n now I don't know. Should I start with Mistborn or should I start with Skyward? I don't know. Mm, okay, I will, I will leave it to the people to decide for me because I am bad at making decisions that aren't just, I'll do all of them. Okay, I have another splurgy gift wrapped book. Oh, it's from Ray. This looks like an amazing book. I need to hear all about it. Don't open till your birthday though. Happy birthday. Okay. I'm going to assume that this is again like the, the thing that tells you your like, it's the note again, but it's in, like, a little card thing. I'm so incapable of just ripping an envelope. I always have to be so careful. Okay. Uh, people are saying... It's fine. Rue bullies me and Tammy on a daily basis. Okay, the audiobook is good. Okay, okay. It's good to know. Sophia leaving so long. <laughs> okay, Skyward is more fun, but Miss Four is more intense. Interesting. Okay. Wait, okay. So, Tammy doesn't like a certain character in Miss Four, but it's still pretty fun. So that's good. I, I think that's good. Because it's like, sometimes there's a character you just hate, but there's still like a good enough plot and story and everything to, like, continue with the series and everything. Um, yes, okay, so, let me actually open the book before I get so wrapped up in the chat I don't remember what I'm doing. Ooh, uh, I need a cover. Yes. <gasps> it's another book crush. Oh my god. This is so great! Okay. Alright. Now it's time for me to gush about another book crush again. So, this is What Do We Need Men For? Which is a fantastic book that I have started reading. And I love it. Uh, so I'm probably like 
Actually, I'm probably like right about here, like a hundred-ish pages in or something like that. And it's so funny because like basically the author has a list of the most hideous men of my life and like runs through them throughout the course of the book. And I don't know, it's just, it's so funny. And like, it's, it's basically just saying that like, men suck, you know? They just do. And that's the plot of the book. Like, okay, it's a real book. It, like, it, I mean, um, it, it's nonfiction. But it's told in such a way that's not just like 300 pages of I hate men, but it's actually like very interesting stories about the author's life. And um, I think that she actually was like a columnist that people would write in to. So, you know, like they were like Dear Abby things that you could write to and be like, Dear Abby, my husband is horrible. Should I leave him? And then she'd be like, yeah. So <laughs> that was her job for many years. And then eventually she was like, you know what? I'm going to take the ultimate feminist journey and pack up all my things. And I'm only going to eat food that is like from a brand that's like has a woman's name in it. I'm only going to visit cities that are named after women. I am only going to like travel all around the world to like these different specific things that are like relating to women. And then I'm going to talk to women and ask, what do we need men for? And if they have a good enough answer, maybe they'll convince me. But otherwise, my proposal is let's get rid of all the men. And like, it's obviously like a satirical proposal, but it's very funny because like within like the first three pages or something, she's like, listen, if we get rid of the men, we, we're going to make so much money because basically an average American man is five foot nine and weighs 195.5 pounds. I've been assured by female scientists that the male body is roughly composed of, and if you go through all these statistics of like how much iodine, iron, magnesium, chlorine, sodium, sulfur, etc., that like is made up in a human body, and she's like, great news, um, we could probably on the open market sell every guy for like a dollar, and think about how many men there are, so we could totally make so much money. So, the number of men in America is generally reckoned at 164,628,232. Ladies, I propose we dispose of our chaps at the $1.03 price, put their elements to better use. So, again, obviously it's totally satire, and it's just, like, a very funny thing. But she does, like, run through, like, kind of, like, horrible experiences she's had, so it's sort of more of, like, a memoir that's told in this way. But I think it's just so, um... I think it's such a good look at the way that women are treated by men in general and the things that, like, people have had to put up with throughout the years and how, like, it's gotten progressively a bit better, but also it sucks. Um, also, like, you'll get, like, interesting kind of stuff throughout the book that's kind of like this. My live stream is, like, laggy, so I can't actually tell you to see, but I'm pretty sure you can. So, um, the writing is not just, like, pages totally full, but there is, like, more interesting um, formatting. There are pictures throughout of, like, the different stuff that's going on, and she travels around, like, only in this, uh, truck, or, I'm uh, sorry, this car with her pet dog, and, like, literally, she just, every chapter talks about, like, whatever, like, the worst man who was on her list of, like, the worst men ever. Um, I, like, I don't really know how else to describe this book, but it's, I want to say it does a good job of talking about feminism without actually, like, accidentally veering into, like, the super white feminism that's, like, not inclusive, really, but it generally is just being, like, some men suck, and let's talk about it. So, I've been really enjoying it so far. Uh, I would like to, like, read it with a more critical lens to see, like, is it going to be really inclusive? Is it potentially transphobic in any way? Which, so far, I haven't seen that it is. But I think that's also, like, important to acknowledge because, you know, I feel like if you don't actually, like, specify that you're talking about cis men, then it can be, like, a little bit rude. But also I feel like a lot of people can acknowledge when you say, like, men suck. You're not talking about every single man in the whole world. So that's, those are my thoughts. Um, but I'm very excited about it. Um, Vin is the worst. Okay. Vin sucks. <laughs> okay. Um... Let's see. I think we said it was. I don't know what it's about. Um, someone's being dragged. Oh, Rue is being dragged on Twitter right now. Wait. Oh, yeah. Oh, men do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Why could I write that book? Honestly, everyone should write like their own feminist text. I would definitely, you know, on my Amazon wish list, I would buy it. I would get it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's intriguing. I definitely would like highly recommend it based on what I've read so far. And I feel like it's it's just like important to start thinking about that stuff. And like I've talked about this before, um, but there's a podcast called The Guilty Feminist, and it completely changed my life. Genuinely. And I know that's, like, such a hard sell to, like, just think, you've got to gotta check this out. But, like, number one, it's free. And number two, it changed my life. So I have to sell it just, like, a little bit. But it basically has, like, these two hosts who are comedians, and they will talk about the ways that they try to be feminists. But, you know, everybody tries to be a feminist, but there are certain things that you do that are, like, is this really feminist? So, for instance, they'll be, like, I had to get on this flight and they were giving me all these complicated instructions and without even thinking about it I yelled into the receiver why are you telling me this tell this to my husband I can't handle these difficult things so like that's not very feminist of them to say but at the same time it's like being able to admit that you're not always perfect at the same time and then they talk about different issues and they have different challenges that they have each week so it could be something that's like um masculinity and femininity so one uh for one week one of the hosts dressed up more feminine and girly and stuff and went out and noticed that like there were different ways that she would hold her posture that like if men were looking at her or even if they weren't it was always like I need to perform a little bit when she dressed up more masculinely and she like spread her legs out and she did like more of like I guess the stuff that's stereotypically that men do then she noticed that like oh I'm not really like performing in the same way that I do for uh anybody to be attracted to me instead I'm just kind of like being very kind of gender neutral but that's what's weird is that like things that are gender neutral are still generally very male oriented so it's so interesting to see stuff like that and to start apply things to your life and realize like oh I don't necessarily always speak up for myself I don't always do the most feminist thing and that's okay you don't have to be perfect but at the same time it's really important to remember that and try to like continuously improve and and see ways that we can be better generally to help not just ourselves, but the next generations that are coming next. So I, it's definitely changed the way that like I talk about myself and the ways that I present myself, and that in, includes stuff like that's at home, very personal, things with friends, and also in the workplace. So highly, highly, highly recommend checking that podcast out. I feel like there are at least 150, if not more, episodes out right now. I'm like not all the way caught up with it, but I actually did get to go see a live show, and it was amazing, totally like, ah, I'm so good, so good. Um, so definitely recommend uh and it's fantastic so please check it out if you haven't already um and now i'm gonna unbox i just keep talking in between all my books but i have two more books to unbox today this one feels kind of heavy <gasps> who did this oh my god i feel like every book i unbox i'm like who did this who did this but like who actually did this oh my god i think there's two books who did this? Okay. Well, to get to you, <gasps> I have only read the first book as well, but I hope you enjoy the trilogy and from taking pop reads. Ah! So I only read Annihilation 2, but I'm in love with it already, and I just wanted to get a copy of the Southern Reach trilogy because I've heard so many good things about how it continues on and just gets better and better, and I absolutely fell in love with the first book of it, so this is actually three books in one. That's amazing! Oh my god! This is so great! Oh, oh my god. If you haven't read the first book, let me just say. So, this, like, I've only read one book by Jeff Vandermeer, which is Annihilation, and now he is immediately, like, if I, if I see him as an author, I am, like, going to pick that book up one day, like, for sure. It is immediately, like, in my TBR. There's no way I'm not reading a book by him. Because just the way that he actually crafted the story was so unique. And it had this kind of, like, sense of... It's, it's creepy without actually really being truly horror. So it's something that anybody, I think, could handle, even if you don't really feel like horror is your genre. And it also has this very... Uh, like kind of like jungly, unknown area vibes because Area X is all about this space that no one's ever 
really fully explored yet. Uh, I think it's supposed to be like this area just sort of like appeared out of nowhere. Like there used to be stuff there and then all of a sudden everything just changed and now it's just really um, difficult to kind of like explore because it's so dangerous but very inexplicable um, like kind of like foresty jungly area that just sort of popped up out of nowhere. So they send people in expeditions to go check out what's been going on over there. And the main character that we follow, I believe she's on the 12th expedition. I'm pretty sure it's the 12th, not the 13th. And she's a biologist on this mission. And then there are three, four other people. Okay, one of them like immediately like backs out and is gone. So I keep forgetting. I think that was the linguist. But there's also a psychologist, an anthropologist, and a surveyor. And I think the linguist like is like oh, gone real fast. But um. Like, I always love the stories where it's just, like, clearly you're following a certain character and everyone's kind of, like, pitted against each other, even though they're probably supposed to be working together and trying to understand this bigger mystery. So that's sort of exactly what's going on here, because the main character's husband was on a previous expedition, and then when he came back, he was completely changed. And I think the, like, government, like, took him away or something like that at a certain point. Um, and she wants to know what happened to him in this space. So she also happens to be a biologist that applied for the mission and got on. And everybody else is just referred to by their profession, which I think is so interesting. And they're actually still very um, characterized very, very well. So even though, like, I feel like horror would be so not my genre, now I'm kind of thinking, like, maybe it is. If, it, if it's something like this, it's definitely, like, a good way to dip your toe in the water and be like, do I like this? Because... It's just creepy enough, but it's still, like, very mystery-centered, and you definitely don't know what's going on, but it's not so abstract that you can't enjoy it. So, Annihilation was a five-star read for me, and now there's the other two books, which I've heard are very different, because I think the next book, Authority, becomes kind of, like, more political, but I actually really, really like political stories, like political fiction, so that'll be really interesting, and I actually have no idea what exception is supposed to be, but... Um, Stephen King says it's creepy and fascinating, and um, other people I don't know think it's great. Yep, everybody says it's great, it's chilling, it's fascinating, it's original and beautiful, maddening and magnificent. I agree. All right, well, yeah, so that's my hard sell for um, the Southern Reach trilogy, and I think it's so good, so totally, totally. And it's such a nice addition, too, because, like, there are a lot of different editions and stuff like that, but this one is so, like, I feel like it's so fitting for what the actual story is. Oh, I'm so happy, like, this is such a, you guys have all been so great with, like, this haul, I feel like you all picked these books that I've been, like, just so, ah, like, I'm so, so, so excited to read all of these books, I and mean, there isn't a single book here that's, like, not really at the top of my TBR right now, so very excited, and it also, um, TV Coveries also got me Elantris, which is, I think it's the first book that Brandon Sanderson ever wrote, so, great, we got three Brandon Sanderson books this haul, which is so great, and um, I've heard different things about this, that, like, some people thought that it was really, really good, but other people thought that, like, it's a little bit, um, I don't know, like, it's not really like his other works because it's his first one. So I know a little bit about it because um, I, I saw some other people talking about it on their channel. So I think that will be really cool to, like, just check out for the first time. Oh. I think Orson Scott Card was like, this book is good, and, like, I don't approve of Orson Scott Card as a human being because he has said some not great things that are pretty homophobic, but he is an excellent author, and I can't deny that. I really, really love the Ender's Game series, so I feel like, okay, th there's a bit of a thing where it's just like, I love this series, but I feel like the author is so problematic, so I don't necessarily want to talk about it on my channel, but on the DL, Ender's Game is really good, and if you can get, like, a used copy or something so you don't support the author, I highly recommend checking it out. So, that, I mean, that alone kind of sells me that it's, like, similar enough to, like, Ender's Game type stuff, so, or at least, like, to that style of writing. And, um, it is, like, tiny little Bible text, but it's also, like, a teen-year book, so I feel like I can definitely, like, read it better, so, yeah. Ooh, people are responding. The Guilty Feminist Podcast taught me a lot about orgasms, just saying. Interesting. What episode is that? Just, just asking for a friend. Just wondering. Um, yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much. <laughs> Buying these editions are so 
Like, this is so beautiful. I've said this so many times, but, like, it's so, so beautiful. It's so nice. And it's also, like, I really love getting stuff from my library because it's free and stuff like that. But also, like, owning a book is just so different and doesn't have that, like, laminate stuff on it. And it's, like, it's really just truly yours. And I don't know. It's just so nice. It's so good. So thank you so much. Um. <laughs> yeah, Eddie, if you do read any of the Southern Reach trilogy, please let me know what you think of it, because I'd be really interested to see what you think of it. Um. Hi, Kristen. Hi. Thank you. Ooh, okay. Rue, we are literally in the middle of a funny read right now, but yes, I will. Again, tentatively, later, but I will. I, I, like, hesitate to say, like, definitely this year, but, like, probably definitely this year. Just, okay. Yeah. Ender's Game is so good. Ugh. Oh, Rue, are you cheating on me with other buddy reads? Like, I'm cheating on you? Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. Ooh, yeah. Ray, if you pick up a Brandon Sanderson book, which, like, I'm also a Brando Sando virgin, but I'd be interested to see, like, which one you pick up and, like, what you think of it. I don't know, like, what was everyone's, I guess for the people who have read Brandon Sanderson before, what was your first Brandon Sanderson book, and do you think that you could have started with a different book? Because now I have so much to choose from. So, oh my god, like, yeah, now I don't know. Because Angela from Literature Science Alliance was like, you should pick up Mistborn or you should pick up Elantris if you want to get introduced to the world. And, like, but I have Skyward. I don't know. Yeah, okay, Kristen, when we done this? Um, Priority of the Orange Tree, which, um, will be in a while, but still. Sure, yeah, if you want to buddy read Elantris with, um, and Rue if you're down, then yeah, for sure, let's do it. Um, has a win episode about women's relationships with orgasms and how some people literally just can't orgasm. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I think I actually remember that episode. That's true. But, yeah, I mean... I think the other thing that's important with, like, that podcast and stuff is that there are a lot of issues that we think are taboo where it's like, I couldn't possibly say the word orgasm out loud. I'm, people will hear me. But it's like, yeah, but why? It's like a human function. And, like, I'm not talking about, like, a very, like, disgusting little, like, facet of a kink or something. It's like, it's a human experience. So I feel like there are certain things that women especially are not allowed to talk about. And thinking about those things more deeply and seeing how other people have been really bold with like their challenges and stuff really encouraged me to be like oh I can actually talk about whatever the fuck I want so that's really interesting hmm. so yeah I, I liked that episode if I, if I remember it correctly it's just like there are a lot of things you don't know and I feel like there are a lot of things that people will not tell you because like with sex and stuff they're like we can't talk about it so um, yeah and then you, you think something's wrong with you and it's not it's just like the human body so um this is supposed to be about books, isn't it? Hmm, interesting. So this is what my stream has become. But hey, it's fine. It's fine with me. Um, mine is Steelheart, but don't start with that. Interesting. I feel like I haven't heard of Steelheart before. I wish I'd started with The Way of Kings. Oh. I feel like I saw somebody say that. Maybe it was Rue that said that recently in a video. I recommend Warbreak. Oh my god, everybody's a different book. <laughs> Okay, for me it was Mistborn, and I recommended it as a start. I recommend, okay, you know what? I'm going to take a picture of this chat, because now I just, like, don't know what to do. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. So, so far, the consensus is, don't start with Steelheart. Maybe start with Wave Kings, or Warbreaker, or Skyward, or Mistborn. <laughs> Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. We can, uh, we can duke it out on Twitter or something at some point, but, um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm very excited to, like, get into the cosmere and see what it's all about, because everybody seems to love Brandon Sanderson. I, I feel like I haven't really met anybody through BookTube that's, like, I don't like Brandon Sanderson, period. Everybody seems to love it. So, um, oh, Sophia hated Steelheart, so she DNF'd it. Okay, well, you also dnf or else, like, Actually, I don't know if you DNF, but I remember that you gave Sleeping Giants two stars, and, like, the heartbreak was so real. That's my favorite. 
Um, in terms of causing it, say misborn or breaker in a way of the general edition. Okay. Skyward is winning, but it's not hard to cause. Oh, it's not! Oh, interesting. Huh. I thought all I thought it was just like everything he's ever written is part of the cause here, so. Hmm. Okay, no. Alright. I got one more book to open up. For now. Okay. Oh, wait. Yes, okay. I don't know. I feel like I've been like spending so much time in between actually unboxing them. I'm like, did I thank the person properly? Oh, and again, okay. Whoever sent me this, please come forward because I still don't know. And I feel I we've been streaming for an hour, a little over an hour. So please let me know. And um, I forgive you, Sophia, because everyone has different tastes and it's totally fine. But I'm still a little bit choked up, a little bit sad about it. Um, and everybody else in the chat. Please give it a shot, because it's so good. Please. Um, yeah. I don't like the narrative choice for the characters! Oh, I love the characters! Okay, I read it as an audiobook, and I thought it was way... I, I wouldn't say way better, because I actually haven't read the physical book, I only read it as an audiobook, but I've listened to the audiobook, like, no joke, probably at least eight times. Um, and I feel like they were better characterized than in a lot of other books that I've read, strangely enough, because it's like a full active cast, and also the whole like epistolary novel really comes to life because it's acted out kind of like a script, and uh, like the voice acting was phenomenal, I thought it was so, so good, and the main, uh, okay, like one of my favorite characters ever is like the guy who is like the interviewer guy, and like you don't know what his name is the whole time, people are like, who are you, and he's just like, classified. I love that guy. He's so good. Um, and his, his voice actor is so, so good. So, I mean, if you're willing to give it a shot, like anybody who wants to read Sleeping Giant, I would highly, highly recommend the audiobook. Definitely. Highly recommend it. Um, yeah. And uh, if anyone wants to buddy read it, I will buddy read it again, because it is so good. I am so happy to read it again. It is very good. Um, uh, but Sophia is also fine if you want to drag it. It is totally fine. I didn't write it. I just love it. That's it. Okay. Last book we are unboxing together. <gasps> oh! Oh, I know who this is from. This is from Lou. And it's the last of August. So this is the second book in um, A Study in Charlotte. And I was talking about how much I love Study in Charlotte on my May wrap-up. Yes, my May wrap-up. And the audiobook was amazing, but I still hated the... Jeez, oh man, really? <sighs> okay, Rue, okay, three stars is not a bad rating. And also, I'm pretty sure I gave it like three and a half stars. Maybe I only gave it three stars. Okay. Alright, the thing is, like, I thought the first book is definitely hands down the best. And honestly, you can stop if you read the first book. You do not have to read the rest of the series to have a complete story. They do end on a cliffhanger, and or like that, that book ends on a cliffhanger and then it leads you into the second book and to be honest, there's a character that gets introduced there that I was like, you're fine, I guess, but I don't really love you. And something happens halfway through the book and I was like, why? And um, I feel like Sophia, if you read the second book, maybe you'd be happy about what happened halfway through, but I wasn't because of what happened. Um, trying to keep this so spoiler free. If you actually want to know what I'm talking about, I have a video um, that's my April wrap up where I just put like a spoiler card down here and then I say what happened. So very, well like I, I sort of say what happened. I don't want to like fully spoil it. But yeah. Um, wow. Well, mm, yeah. So I feel like, like that happened and then I think things just kind of went downhill from there. I really appreciated like the science of it. I thought it was so good. Uh, but just I didn't like that that happened, and I felt like that took away so many of the cool perspectives that we were getting, and then we sort of just focused in on, like, two or three characters after that, and I was like, I don't really, I wish that, like, there was more. And then in the third book, one of the characters, that one that I didn't really like in the second book, I hated her so much. She was so annoying. And it was so weird, because I went from the second book, which is an audiobook, and I was reading it physically at the same time, and then I went to the third audiobook, again while I was reading at the same time and like they definitely changed voice actors for almost everybody 
and all of a sudden this character now has like this weird accent that was like what because the second book she has this puerto rican accent which is well acted and then in the third book it was like if somebody was trying to do like a staten island accent for the first time and then they were just like go boys act that book so it was just very weird that that was like the choice that they made and also there wasn't really a good reason for why all of a sudden her accent would change so that was weird that was a bit weird um but I mean, look, I'll still recommend it as a series, because I still think it's really good. There were just some choices that I did not appreciate there, because I felt like they were done just to drive the plot forward, but there wasn't really a good, sensible reason for why certain things happened. So, anyway, okay, so, back to, back to Studying Charlotte. So, if you've watched my super duper duper long May wrap-up, first of all, thank you, because it's like 40 damn minutes, so thanks for having patience. Uh, also, if you watched it on Double Seed, totally fine with me. I do not care. I do not even look at monetization right now. So, thank you. Um, and if you have, then you'll know that I was gushing about studying Charlotte because it was so good. And I actually read it with my eyes. Surprise, surprise. Uh, and I loved it so much. And it was just like getting back into that, like, Sherlock Holmes and, wow, Sherlock Holmes and John Watson duo together again, and in, like, just a very refreshing new way. I loved it so much. Like, I used to watch the Sherlock TV show when it was coming out, and I know everybody was, like, fangirling about that and stuff, and I was just like, oh, yeah, I actually really like the show. It's really cool. And one of my friends from high school was the one who got me into it, so we used to watch it together all the time. So I definitely have, like, fond, nostalgic memories of it, and I feel like I just haven't really, like, watched the show since, I think it was, like, season three that, like, some stupid stuff started happening that was like, okay, clearly the writers were fired and replaced with, like, fan fiction writers, and it's, it shows. It's not good. So, I feel like at that point I just, thought, like, stopped with it. But I had been kind of, like, low-key thinking about that show again, and, like, I kind of want to watch season one, season two again, and then I feel like watch, uh, reading this book just gave me that fix, and it's so good. I loved it so much. So, um, like, I, I talked about this in, in that video, but it's like, the duo was perfect because it is a younger, um, like, duo in this case, because this is supposed to be, like, the several generations later descendants of both Sherlock and, or, like, Holmes and Watson, and they are, like, together as a duo trying to solve this case where they're being framed as murderers, uh, but there's, like, some tension, it's, like, romantic tension between the two because the Watson character has a crush on the Holmes character, but Holmes is very, like, you know, like, I'm here to, like, solve the case, and that's what I'm all about, and it's not really so much about, like, you know, any kind of romance between the two, because she's just very, like, you know, I'm here to solve the case, why is romance remotely evolved? But you can also tell that she, like, kind of has a soft spot for him, and I feel like I just love that kind of duel where it's, like, it doesn't need to be romantic, but you just have a connection with another person, and you just like, for some reason, you just need each other, you need each other to be in your life, and I think, like, there kind of is, like, some romantic tension towards the end, but there's also, like, a good reason why it doesn't just magically come together, and it's, like, it's the final moment where the boy and the girl get together, but instead it's just, like, no, we're, like, a detective duo, and maybe one day we'll be together romantically, but that's not today, and the book ends, and it's, like, chill, I like that a lot, so I was really excited to read the second book, so I bought it, and then uh, I was looking through something on like Goodreads or something, and I was like, oh, shit. I think I bought the third book, not the second book. So I added this onto my um, Amazon wish list, and then Lou messaged me and was like, I got it for you, and I wanted to make sure that I definitely got you, like, the second book, because I knew you loved it so much. So it's so nice to, like, have that. And uh, it's cool because it has, look at this, there's, like, the family tree. So there's the Holmes family tree here, which is, like, the original Holmes and the original Moriarty. And uh, at a certain point in the book, it is revealed that the descendant of Moriarty, like at this generation, is somewhat involved with what's going on with the Holmes Watson duo. So, yeah, I think it's so cool. And like at the end of the book that I was reading, there was a preview for the second book. So, uh, I'm very excited about it. I love like murder mysteries and stuff anyway, so. It's just very exciting. It's so, okay. Well, thank you, Lou. Um, I don't think you're here in the chat right now, but in case you are watching this, it's a playback, and thank you very much. Um, okay. Um, 
<laughs> yes, please do read Sunny Charter. It's so good. Definitely. I definitely do, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, interesting. Oh, the second is really interesting. Hmm. Well, I think it's a four book series. So I have. Because I thought The Last of August was a third book for some reason. So I have that, and then I also have A Case for Jamie, which is a third. And then I think the last book is. Mm, a question for somebody. Is it home? Maybe? So, I don't have that book, but um, I want to actually like read through the books that I actually do have, because I feel like we all know, we've all experienced this, where like, you just buy a bunch of books and you get really excited, and then you just put them in a corner and you're like, I'm so excited about that book, I'm so excited about that book, and then you just do not read it, and then you go do something else, so, um, and then you're like, oh, I love that book, I love that, and it's like, oh, really, what, what was your favorite part? And it's like, oh, uh, I don't have a favorite part, I just love looking at it on my shelf, I just, I haven't read it, why do you think I would have read it? I just love collecting books, that's my hobby, not reading them, so. Oh, yeah, okay, A Question of Holmes was doing the thing, okay, yeah. Oh, you never read a murder mystery? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll have, like, a video to recommend murder mysteries. Is that something people would be interested in? Because I love murder mysteries. I feel like, okay, the thing is, I read a lot of domestic thrillers, and those are usually murder mysteries, but at the same time, I, I don't know, like, I feel like they kind of fall outside of the genre. But I would definitely do, like, a domestic thriller recommendation video and talk about, like, the different ones that definitely, like, did it for me. Very good. And, um, yeah, I mean, like, if you're interested in reading some manga that is murder mystery based, I will always recommend Case Closed, which is, like, so bizarre, but so good. And, like, I don't know, <laughs> maybe some of you won't trust my opinion, because I was like, I love Sleeping Giants, and then she was like, mm, this is shit, so <laughs> I guess we'll see. But, um, it's so good, it's so good, so highly recommend it. Uh, and it, it's like, I think I talked about this before, but it's like, there's a teenage boy, and he gets stuck in the body of a little kid, basically, so, like, he, he gets turned back into a little kid, because this organization was trying to kill him, they gave him this experimental poison, but instead of killing him, it turned him into a kid. So he's trying to hide his identity so they don't come after him and kill him or any of his loved ones. But, uh, so he looks like a five-year-old kid, but there's all these different, like, murder mystery cases that happen around him because his best friend's father, who he's staying with, is a detective. So every time they go around to different locations, there's the murder mystery. But the detective the father sucks. He is so bad at actually solving cases. He's very funny, and I love him. But at the same time, not a good detective. So a lot of the times, the kid the real detective will have to kind of like solve the case and then sort of like low-key solve the whole case but like he tranquilizes the dad this is gonna sound bizarre he, it is bizarre he tranquilizes the dad and then he has this voice modulating bow tie that he can use to change it so he sounds like different people and then he'll make himself sound like the dad and then he'll solve the case so the dad has this reputation as the sleeping detective because he's literally tranked the whole time that he solves the case. And somehow it always wears off, like, just when he's done solving the case and they catch the murderer and the murderer's like, I admit it, I was jealous. And then it's like, yep, yep. So I love it. I think it's so funny, but it's also so good because the cases that are being solved are like, you would never, ever see anybody actually commit murder this way because it's insane. No. No way. I, it's, it's ridiculous where it's just like, I had a piece of dental floss and I, I put it through like the ceiling and I put it around the thing and I attached it to the doorknob so I created a closed room murder and then I snipped it and then I pulled it and Conan's like, but you made one fatal mistake that you saw like a piece of it was like stuck here and you didn't know. And it's like, who the hell would do that? How do you deduce from a little piece of like tape that that was the method that somebody used to murder something like it's so ridiculous but i love it so much so there is a manga there's also an anime i will warn you the anime is like a 90s anime so everybody has like gigantic ears and like not a very proportional face but hey it's anime you get what you paid for so i definitely recommend it and also like they made like newer um episodes that are i guess like you would say like closer to like now this style of animation 
and they look like better. I mean, yeah, they look better. Uh, but I love them, like both the old ones and the new ones. I just think they're so great. So I highly recommend checking out the manga though if you um, want to try out like weird murder mysteries. So love them. Uh, like almost every single book I give five stars because they're just so good. I love them so much. So. Oh, okay. I feel like Sammy's probably already gone, but just in case, goodbye and thanks for coming. Um, Darian says I've been attacked. Uh, I think this is a, a study in Charlotte, so be seated. Remember when we? Oh, remember when we read the guest list? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, but like, it's fine. Whatever books that you like is totally fine. Just Darian and I, buddy, read a book and we had very different opinions on it, and I don't actually think it was bad, but I feel like sometimes my star rating makes it seem like I hate a book, because for me, like, five stars is like, it was so good, it was life-changing, I would easily read this book again, I highly recommend it to anybody who's interested in the genre, totally, totally, totally love this book, so fantastic. Four is like, it was really great, I really liked this book. Three is, it was good. Two is, it was okay, but could have been executed better. And one is, I do not like this book. And then no star rating is usually when, like, I just don't really know how to put a rating on a book, period. Like, I read, um, this is this book, Trust Exercise by Suzanne Choi. And it was really hard to even say if it was, like, good or not, because it made me really uncomfortable to read. And it was very cool because there were like actually three different narratives and it was hard to actually see what the connection was without actually doing like a full analysis and I read through what some other people thought on blogs and stuff like that and then I got a much better understanding of what was going on but it still felt weird for me to like put that on the same par as what I've put for like three star four star five star books before so I just left it unrated which um I, I hope that's not actually like horribly affecting like an author's ratings or something like that on Goodreads because I would like to like give back to the author in whatever kind of like rating way that I can as a reviewer but at the same time it's sometimes really hard to just like pin down a rating for something so I'm curious if like anybody else has had that kind of like same issue of like I don't know what to put for this so I'm just not gonna put anything so I don't know. um but yeah but like you know I I feel like with my rating system if I put two everyone's like mm. but at the same time like it was fine, and for some people it'll be really good, but for me, as a person who may have, like, read similar things before, I feel like the first time you read it is so good, so it just totally, like, sticks with you, and you're like, wow! But if you've read something like that before, and then you read it again, it feels like it's kind of being rehashed, so maybe you don't enjoy it as much. And I feel like, for me, that book itself was, like... Okay, so yeah, spoiler alert, I didn't really love the guest list, but, like, I think it just, like jumped around from person to person to person, and I was just like, just tell me who's dead. Just tell me who's dead so I can start caring and be, like, upset. But I think they just didn't want to tell you, so that way... Actually, Darian brought up, like, such a good point after we were done reading it, that, like, there was a lot of tension between so many different characters. So it actually kind of made it interesting to guess, like, who's getting murdered before you even guess who the murderer was. So, I guess for me, like, it wasn't as great of a, like, choice, because I didn't... I wanted to see that and then start getting into like the case of like solving it and like looking for clues because I guess I generally like a very traditional detective story of like someone's been murdered okay here's like this is the cause of death and then let's solve the clues and figure out who it is and then finally reveal the person and the motive and usually that's like my preferred formula so it is interesting to like switch it up but I guess for me it didn't work as well um and it's interesting because I think like a lot of people really really loved the guest list so I wonder if it's just like that switcheroo that made it like so great to certain people, um, or if it was like the big reveal at the ending. So, uh, but Darian actually did guess the murderer. So, good job, Darian. I'm very proud of you. Um, I feel like I always read murder mystery books or like anything like that where I'm trying to guess what the final mystery thing is, and then I take it way too far where I'm like, they're actually alien from this area, and they were able to do this because of that and that and that, and they're like, um, no, it's literally the husband. And it's like, yeah, well, I probably should guess that, but, <clears throat> oops. So, my bad. Mm. Oh, Allie's here. Hi. Hi, Allie. I'll still read anything you recommend. Oh, my God, Sophia. Okay, please read case closed. <laughs> that is all. Oh, thank you, Rue. Thank you for coming, and thank you for the congrats. Yes, I am talking about Conan. I love Conan. 
every time I find a new like person who loves Cotton, I just get so excited. This is so good. I love it so much. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. I see <laughs> what Darren was saying. Um, when you buy books and then you just look at them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, I do that because, like, one of my favorite, this sounds so sad, but, like, one of my favorite hobbies before quarantine happened was to go to the bookstore with my boyfriend and then just point out books that I know, which is so stupid because it's, like, it's not a book I read and I love. I'm just like, oh, I know that book. Oh, that book is on my audiobook app. Oh, I know that book. Someone was talking about it on a booktube channel. Oh, my God, I know this thing. I know this thing. Like, that's what I would do today if I went to a thing. I'd just be like, I know that book. I know that book. Or it's like, I own that book. Oh, what did you think? I don't know. I haven't read it. So that's, like, this is the full commentary that I usually have. Unless there are certain times when I'll come across a book and be like, hate that book. That book was so bad. And I feel like I'm so judgy and, like, I try not to be too, too judgy about stuff, but I just, I don't, I'm not so good at loving every single book because there's just certain flaws that I can't get past them, and I'm a bitter old man, so it's just the way I am, sorry. Um, yeah. Oh, okay, bye, Iris, thank you for coming. Yeah, so, I mean, like, I do that, I do that all the time. Oh, oh, okay, wait, 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 so I see some people here, so... Can anybody claim this book? Because I've had this for a while and I don't know who it's from. So I feel like I just need to keep, like, maybe this is, like, the fourth or fifth time I've held this up and been like, who is this? But maybe somebody's here now, uh, watching this now, who has gifted this. So I would really like to thank you properly if it is from you. Um, that would be great. And also, thank you, like, to everybody who's just here in general, because I feel much better about actually streaming and doing something live because there are actually like people here that are watching and I'm not like talking to myself. I mean like, you know, usual booktube is like, I talk to myself on a camera and then I post it on the internet. But it's just, it feels sadder to like stream if nobody was here. So just thank you all for being like good friends and like showing up. So thank you very much. Um, yeah. Okay, yes, yes. See, Sophia gets it, all right? Sophia and Darian know what I'm talking about. You just go to a place and you're like, know that book. I know that book. And, like, I get so excited as if to be like, oh my god, that book. I have such a big crush on that book. Ah. But it's like, just go for it, man. Ask her out. Come on. I should just pick up a book and, like, actually read it. But I don't. Because, um, I'm too shy. I'm too, I don't know. But, yeah. Um, oh, wait. Okay. I feel like in the playback, I can't see if actually this book is visible, but it's a darker shade of magic. In case anybody can't see that, because I am, like, near a window. Um, so, yeah. Oh, um, so I thought maybe, because I've now finished with, like, the unboxing and stuff, I could kind of talk about some ideas that I have for my channel, and if anybody has any thoughts on what they would like to see sooner versus later, uh, I'd be happy to, like, you know, keep that in mind as I consider, like, what I'm posting here. Because, um, I mean, like, everything still generally needs to be edited, but I kind of want to talk about it. So, I do have a book haul, and I bought a whole bunch of books in, like, May, June. There was, like, a period of time when I think I just suddenly decided, like, I'm going to buy books. So, I got really excited, and I wrote down every single book that I was really interested in getting and where you could get it, whether it was um, through my library or something, or if it was, like, on Book Depository or whatever. So I made this big list, and then, like, my heart was racing the whole time, and then I finally bought a bunch of books, and they came in this gigantic box, and then I just kept them there for a long time because I actually wanted to film a book haul, but I was waiting for another book that I won from a giveaway that uh, Lois from Lochon Reads was hosting, and uh, sadly enough, I don't really know what happened, but I think, like, when the book shipped, it either, like, never got here or it, like, went to someone else's house or something like that, so... I never actually received the book, so um, Lois was kind enough to like go through the whole process to like get money back and stuff, and then just kind of like send it to me so that I could purchase the book myself. Um, but like through all that stuff, where I was like kind of waiting for it to come, waiting for it to come, I sort of like forgot which books I bought through my book haul. So um, I did film that, and it was right around the time when like Hamilton was just coming on TV. So it was July 2nd, July 3rd ish when I filmed that for the first time. So, um, it's so hard to, like, plan out your content and stuff, because I also have, like, I have Reading Rush blogs that, um, sort of, like, tapered off around the time when it was my birthday, because I just did not have a lot of energy to, like, 
do reading, talk about reading on the vlog, and also just generally do like celebratory birthday stuff. So, um, there might be like a day missing, and sorry, um, but yeah, and so there's that, the Reading Rush vlog, and um, also, so I was thinking about this, and do let me know if this is something you'd be interested in, but for my birthday this year, my parents made me a scavenger hunt, and I asked them to make me a scavenger hunt because uh, I really, really enjoy them. And I usually make scavenger hunts for people's birthdays or for anniversaries and like Mother's Day, Father's Day stuff. So I was wondering if people would be interested in like a video that's kind of a how-to guide to make a scavenger hunt or like an escape room or something like that. So if you're interested in that, do let me know. Um, I'm going to put this down because I, I would like to like talk animatedly with my hands. Um, oh, bye Darian. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Um, yeah, so, those are some ideas I have floating around. I do have, well, I need to film a June wrap-up. Maybe I'll just condense it with a June-July wrap-up, but I feel like it's going to be like an hour, so I probably will just separate that out as much as I can. Um, and I also have plans to have some book reviews coming out on my channel. So, I have 10,000 Doors of January and Angels and Dunes planned as book reviews with special guests to come onto my channel. And also I would love to do like more live stuff if this has been really fun for anybody else because it's been really fun for me. Um, I would love to do that. And um, I also have some, I don't know, kind of like, I mean I would love to do like audiobook recommendations, murder mystery and domestic thriller recommendations, um, stuff like that. Manga recommendations for sure. Anime recommendations. The correct rating of Ghibli movies recommendations. I'm just kidding, but I'm just saying like, I would love to do stuff like that. That would be so good. Um, and, uh, it, oh, yeah, so it looks like some people would be interested in, like, the scavenger hunt stuff, so I would love to do that. I probably have a separate video for a scavenger hunt and then escape room, because they are kind of different. And, um, I don't know, like, I, I think I've learned a lot over the years of doing it, and it's a really fun, cute idea for a birthday, especially if you feel like, you know, if money's kind of tight, or if you want to just make something like a little extra special for someone. Uh, I have a lot of ideas for how to incorporate that even in like kind of small space. And you can definitely do it uh, in your home. Or, um, I, I mean, I've seen some people do it kind of like virtually and I don't really know that much about that stuff, but it would be more of like stuff that you can do in your house if you want to set up a scavenger hunt or in a specific space. So I've done that in, um, I, I did that for my boyfriend. So I did that in my apartment, in his apartment, uh, in his other apartment. I did it at my house, um, and I also did it for, like, my parents and stuff. So, um, definitely, definitely would be happy to do a video like that. And, um, let me see. Oh, I also have an idea for another video about, like, okay, I mean, like, this will be so stupid because I'm not even at 80%, but just, like, how to get your net galley rating up. Because I think some people, like, okay, honestly, like, net galley is not that difficult to figure out, I would say, once you've done some research, but I also feel like it would be so much easier if you could just click on a video and it would just tell you everything you need to know about NetGalley real quick, and I'm still a newbie to it, so I think it would be good to, like, kind of show the process of, like, getting your rating a little bit higher up, so, uh, because I, I posted a tweet that was like, I did it, and I had, like, a 2% rating on NetGalley, and now I'm at, like, a humble 17% because I just request way too many books. But just talking about, like, stuff that you could put in your profile um, and things that, like, you know, would help you to get certain books or just generally, like, increasing your rating and stuff like that. So, um, a potential idea. I feel like that's not as exciting as the other ones, though, so it's just sort of, like, in the back of my head floating around. Oh, and um, another one is I'd also love to do a video if people are interested on, like, how to do some video editing for booktube videos because uh, some people have been, like, you know, very, very kind with the things that they're saying about, uh, like, my editing and stuff like that, and honestly, I don't think it's, like, actually that difficult, and there are just certain tiny little tweaks that you can make to really, I don't know, I, I feel like I'm not in a position where I could be, like, elevate your videos, but I'm just saying, like, there are kind of, like, tiny little things that really make a difference, at least in my opinion, that I did through a lot of research before I actually joined BookTube and did any of that stuff, so I watched a whole bunch of videos on, like, generally how to run your YouTube channel, and, like, you know what, let's be honest, I suck at actually staying to a specific schedule of, like, 
every Wednesday and Friday. I cannot do that. I can't. But I'm just saying, things like your intro, your outro, how to build that stuff, how do you get, like, um, copyright free music, and how do you just, like, make these tiny little adjustments and changes to kind of, like, add some more interactability and, like, exciting things that are on screen when you do a video. So, um, I would be happy to do something like that, talking about how to make thumbnails. So, I mean, I, I think that stuff is, like, not exactly booktube related, so it might be just sort of, like, every once in a while I would love to do, like, just a short, tiny little video about stuff like that. But, um, yeah, if you're interested in anything like that, I would be very happy to talk about it and do that stuff. Um, yeah, okay, so let's see. Gather the two I get, yes. Um, would love to watch this video. Great, okay. Um, I need that neck alley video in my life. Okay, good to hear. Good to know. And, uh, okay, Sophia asks, how did you make your intro? Would love to know that. So, I will go into more depth in making that video, but I will tell you right now that I made my intro using Canva. So, Canva is a website that I use very often to make graphics for free. I did that with, like, my club in college, and there are so many different templates and free graphics that you can use. You can also upgrade um, for, like, a month for free to Canva Pro. I accidentally kept it for an extra month and had to pay for it, which I'm not happy about. But, uh, honestly, like, I've used their service for, like, several years, so it's fine if I'm, like, kind of giving back. But I would say you can do a lot with a free program, for sure. I happen to use the pro one to actually make some of the graphics that are in mine, but, um, like, so for instance, if you look at my intro, it, it starts out and it's yellow, and then it has, like, the little books show up, and they move back and forth, and then you see, like, the glasses with the book in the background, and they, like, flash back and forth, and it starts sparkling and stuff like that. So I, I use Canva to make a lot of those different graphics, and then I splice them together in my video editing software, and I put music to it in the background and save that as something that I can just keep throwing into my video every time. So with that kind of stuff, I think it makes it just like a little bit more interesting. And it's kind of like a TV show where you have like a little theme song that runs in the beginning and the end to remind people like just like sandwiching it in. So it's kind of like the psychology behind that of like, if you have like a little singer at the beginning and then you have that intro and then you have your actual video where that singer reappears somewhere. Sometimes I do just kind of like use a random clip that's not gonna be in the video, but I do really appreciate having that singer where people are like, I'm waiting for that to come in your video and it comes and they're like, I knew it. I knew it was coming. So, I don't know, like, like, little things like that, I think, are really helpful in making your videos. And, um, you know, just, just having, like, something with a unique graphic definitely makes you more identifiable. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's, like, any other, like, further questions. Oh, uh, re-editing intro-outro tips and starting. Yeah. Um... Neck alley and editing tips are always appreciated. Also, I want to see your correct writing of Ghibli movies, please. Okay. I mean, like, here's the thing. I need to actually watch more Ghibli movies because I was talking about this with my boyfriend. I was actually telling him about, like, Tammy's video, and he was like, what? Because he's, like, he's a much bigger, like, anime Ghibli fan than I am. But at the same time, he was like, incorrect. And I'm like, okay, it's an opinion. But at the same time, how will she not be at number seven? So then he gave me his rating, and how was still at number seven. Just disrespectful. So, but at the same time, I know there are a lot of Ghibli movies that are just, they've fallen through the cracks, or else there are things that I don't remember as clearly. So I would like to actually, like, re-watch them before I come out with a ranking video. But uh, I have a general structure of what the best one is, and some other stuff that's in between around there. So I would be happy to do that. And, um, yeah, I mean, like, the other thing is, like, this is a booktube channel, but I think it's also a good opportunity to just talk about stuff that interests you. And I've seen some people say that they're not sure if it's appropriate, but it's also like, it's your channel. You can do anything you want on it. And especially if you're kind of like a small booktuber, so like I've hit 200 now, which is great, but I feel like you're still in the scope of being small. You have this wonderful opportunity to do whatever you want. And then you see how that reacts you know, how people react to your videos. So if they really love the stuff that you've been putting out with books, and they're like, we love it when you do book hauls, we love it when you do wrap-ups, the stuff when you talk about, like, you know, uh, which movie, like, a movie review, maybe it's not as awesome. But at the same time, maybe you talk about books, book hauls, and then you start talking about, like, the anime you love, or 
you know, how to edit a video, and like that stuff still ends up being really useful, and there's still things that are incorporated into making your videos. So I think it's totally fine to like just talk about whatever interests you. And especially right now in quarantine, if you can make a video about the ways to entertain yourself, people are going to love that because everybody is bored all the time. And even if they're not bored right now, they're going to be bored soon. So if they can get a recommendation out of you on what to check out, you're doing great. You are doing great soon. So, um, yeah, I, I would definitely be happy to make any of those kinds of videos for you guys. And, um, you know, I, I'd love to like kind of get a sense of like what people want to see sooner, but uh, I'm definitely to like produce some more bookish content outside of just like this awesome, you know, haul that you guys have given and gifted to me. And I'm just, I'm very, very grateful, very thankful and appreciative. And I would love to like, you know, keep producing some more things that you guys like to see. So I, I do have those other things that I want to put out there. Uh, probably a vlog or two. Oh, I also have a vlog for uh, me reading the Unhoneymooners for the first time, and uh, I, I normally do not like romance books, period, because I just don't think they're that interesting, and then I read this, and I was like, oh, it was so good. I know that some people, like, thought it was just okay, and I was like, fine, totally fine, but I loved it, so good. Like, some people were like, I don't like Act 3, but I like Act 1 and 2, but like, I, I feel like even though Act 3 was mad corny, it was so good. It was so good. I was so happy. I just loved it so much. And like, there was a bird on the cover, and I do not even like birds, but still recommend. Still recommend. Very good. Um, I also listened to that one as an audiobook, and it was still a great time, so, um, yeah, yeah, so, just because I'm not posting consistently like three times a week or anything like a lot of other people does not mean I'm not thinking of you because I'm always thinking of you. I am always trying to think of cool new ideas. Um, I, I definitely want to do more things that you know you would like to see and some things that I've had on my mind and I would just love to hear like the the things you must be excited about to uh, get from me for now. So, oh I think I also had, I had an idea for like tier ranking the um, Series of unfortunate events with Guardians because some of them are good and some of them look. So I'd love to talk about that at a certain point because I feel like Series of Unfortunate Events is low key kind of like my brand at this point. Not quite, but like I do bring it up a lot. So it's content. We love content. So, um, but I think so. I said I was going live at two, and so now it's been like almost two hours. So I would like to kind of like wrap up kind of soon um, and just thank everybody again for like coming to this live stream and for just, you know, like participating in the chat. It's so great to like actually hear from you and see that like number one, that my live stream works and number two, that, you know, you're interested in the content and like hear back and again, hey, did somebody claim this book? I don't know who it's from. I guess I'll just post it on Twitter and be like, who is this from? But uh, just overall thank you so much there's just so many people here that i i feel so special and so loved and i think especially in quarantine it's so nice to actually feel like i don't know that like you know there's, there's still somebody that's thinking of you even if you're not there in person there's still somebody who you know somewhere across the world somewhere is still thinking of you and is kind enough to you know at this time give you something for your birthday so really 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 so happy i feel so special these were all such fantastic book picks and um honestly like i put a lot on my wish list and you guys did such a good job of like actually hand picking the ones that like i am most excited about so just thank you from the bottom of my heart i'm so happy i'm so happy to like have all of you in my life and uh i love you so much thank you so much for for coming to my live stream and um i will see you on twitter on booktube, generally, on the internet. Thank you.